All right, so our first uh, financial model we're going to deal with is compound interest. And compound interest is commonly used in savings accounts. If you own a have a savings account, uh, compound interest is used in uh, calculating how much money they're going to put into your account uh, every so often. Okay? So there's a formula for it. A of T, so it's just a function of time is what it is. So P is the principal investment. That's how much money you put into the savings account. So that's your initial amount in the when day one, what, what you start with, okay? One, that's just the number one. It's always going to be there. Plus R over N. R is the interest rate that your account draws. Right now, interest rates are pretty low on savings accounts. Uh, like less than half a percent, uh, which is not very good at all. I think about a tenth of a percent. It's pretty crappy, uh, but there are other accounts that you can deposit money in, like a CD, a cash deposit. Uh, CDs, you lock your money in there for a certain amount of time, and the interest rate is higher because the bank knows that money's going to be there for a year, three years, seven years, depending on what which one you sign up for. N is the number of times a year they're going to compound the interest. Okay, uh, most savings accounts at local banks are quarterly. Once every three months. Okay, so N would be four for quarter. Some accounts are monthly. At the end of every month, it throws the interest back into it. That that's uh, pretty common. Quarterly and, and monthly are the most common. Uh, there are some that are semi-annually, two times a year, or uh, less common would be daily. Uh, even more less common would be hourly. Uh, but all that stuff uh, is possible. Uh, when we're dealing with this. This N that's here is the same N that's up here. So those numbers repeat in this formula. T is time. Time, when you're dealing with financial models, is always in years. So if they say something for six months, your time is going to be 0.5. Okay, so time is always in years when you're dealing with financial models. A of T is just the account worth over time. So how much over whatever amount of time they gave you, that's how much the account is worth. So if I said after five years, the account is worth $7,500, then that's A of T, and T is five. All right. So this is our formula. The, know it, be able to apply it, okay? So we're going to work a few problems with comp compounding interest, and then we'll get continuous interest as well uh, with this, and then go from there, okay? All right, let's work a problem. Let's say we're investing fifteen hundred bucks at two point five percent interest compounded quarterly. for four years. So here's the scenario of what we're doing here. We've got 1,500 bucks. They were graduating this year and we've sent out a bunch of invitations to all our relatives that don't live around here in hopes that they don't come to graduation, but they send a check. That's what, that's what you do. So you send out all these invitations and everybody sends you money back and you got, you, you hit the jackpot. Somebody wrote an extra zero on the check. And you got fifteen hundred bucks that you want to just put in the bank, and you're going to leave it there for four years, so that at the end of four years, hopefully you've graduated college, and you need some money to to get started in life. Deposit on a on an apartment, or maybe it's to furnish your first apartment, something like that. So what you're doing is you're investing in in that amount of money, and you're just going to leave it alone. You're not going to put any more money in there with it. You're just going to leave it there and forget about it for four years. And come back and see how much it's worth. Okay, because we're going to leave it there four years and not pull anything out. The bank says, "Oh, we're going to give you more interest than what we normally do. We're going to give you two and a half percent quarterly for that." So what we're going to do is we're going to find, figure out how much is our account worth after this amount of time. These are the simplest of problems that you'll get for this this particular section. Okay, this is where we're trying to find account worth. So. Our formula, I'm going to write it down again just so we see it more times you see it. 
better. You're going to understand it and, and, and know it. Okay. So we're looking for a principal investment of how much? 1500 So that's going to go in the place of P. That one is always there, so I'm just going to put it there. Our interest rate is 2.5%. What is that as a decimal? 0 0.025. How many times a year is it going to compound? Four times, because it said quarterly. There are four quarters in a year. One fourth of a year. NT, N, still four. How long are we leaving it there? Four years. We're going to be in college four years, and we're going to graduate in four years. I said that too. That didn't happen. So we're looking for the account worth after four years. That's really what we're finding here is A of four. So this is just plug it in, work it out. Okay. So in my calculator, they said I'm just going to pull out the calculator and let it do the do all the heavy lifting here. Type in fifteen hundred parentheses one plus point zero two five divided by four. Close the parentheses. Raise to the. I'm going to just go ahead and multiply four times four is sixteen, so I don't have to type in four times four. That's what my formula does. I'm just going to crank it out. Enter. At the end of four years, we will have gained $157.24. Okay. $16.57.24. We earned $157.24. And we did nothing to do. That's may not seem like an astronaut, uh, you know, just an astronomical amount of money. It's not, but it's $150 for doing nothing, for putting that money in the bank and, and walking away. Christian. Would you make more money if you put like one giant investment in the bank, or would you make more if you have like smaller amounts in different banks? Like, Depending on the interest rates in those banks. If you're just doing savings accounts, one large one is the better thing, as long as it doesn't exceed FDIC uh, protection, which is what? Um, ten, I think it's it's went up. It used to be 10,000. I think it's 12 now. And it, so I would, you know, kind of have to spread it out when it's that way or put it in other investments. Uh, the, the best thing is an annuity. Uh, to invest in if you've got a large amount of money instead of just a savings account because the interest rates are higher and most of the time they're safe to do. There are some that are not as safe, but most of them are pretty safe. Now let's get to one that's not quite as easy a problem. Uh, and that's, that's where you're trying to figure out how much should I invest in order to have a certain amount of money? And this is the problem that's more useful probably in life. So how much... Should I invest for six years at 3.25% interest? Compounded monthly this time. To have six thousand dollars at the end. Okay, so here, you know, our goal is that after six years, we have six thousand dollars laying there to use for whatever we want to do: down payment on the house, down payment on the car, something. We've got a plan for that. We found this annuity or this fund that if we lock our money in for six years, they'll give me three point two five percent interest. And that's a wonderful thing because uh, you don't see that very much. Okay, so I know that all I've got to figure out is how much money do I have to have at the beginning. And if I've got that amount of money right now, I can put it in there and leave it alone and I'll get $6,000 in six years. So, or I'll have a total of $6,000. So I know my A of T, principal one plus R over N to the NT. I know my account worth is $6,000.
I do not know the principal. That's the part I want to know. My interest rate is 3.25% as a decimal would be 0 0.325. And then N is monthly. So what's N? Monthly. In a year. 12 months. It's only in one year. It's not for the life of the loan. It's per year. How many times it compounds per year? Uh, so then NT would be 12 times six years. But there's where 72 is at. It's the exponent. How's that? Okay. So what's this in general? It's a what? It's a number. We have P times a number is equal to a number. How do we get our principal investment? Yeah, get this number and then divide 6,000 by that number. That's all we've got to do. Okay? So let's get that number. 1 plus, whoop, I'm going to put parentheses here. 1 plus 0 0.0325 divided by 12 raised to the 72 power. Ugly number, but it's a number. And we want to divide 6,000 by that. Divided by that number. No idea why I wasn't in there. I'd be kidding. So, $4,938 and how many cents? 31, right? The principal should be $4,938.31. We rounded that correctly. We did. Yeah. That's how much we need to put in the bank and leave there for six years in order to earn a little over a thousand dollars in six years by doing nothing pretty good okay so if you've got almost five thousand dollars right in there you can turn it into six thousand dollars by doing nothing uh investing it in, in in an account that does that so that's that's nice i guess i don't know who has that kind of money laying around Teachers don't. Sure. All right. Let's get to a better problem. More intense problem, maybe. How long must we leave 1500 bucks in an account that draws 1.5% quarterly. We have an account worth 2,500 bucks. So basically, how long is it going to take us to earn a thousand dollars out of our account? We start with 1,500. So. Our formula, A of T, T1 plus R over N to the NT. What are the things we know? Account worth is how much? 2500 What else do we know? Principal's 
So one we know is already always there. What's R? Zero one five. N. How many times a year? Four times a year. And then the exponent is 4t. Oh, because we don't know how much time. Ah, here we have a problem with the variable in the exponent. Wonder why this was in the same section as all this other stuff. That's why. Okay, so now all we got to do is solve this. Okay. What would be our first step in solving this? You could. Uh, no. Because it's exponential. It's not the same each year. Because your beginning balance at the begin end of the first year is going to be different than your beginning balance at the end of the second year and stuff. So it doesn't work. It doesn't get you the same amount of money each of the, each of the year. I would divide by 1,500. We all know that this is just a big decimal thing here. We're going to let the calculator hold all those decimal places because it's about that long. And we don't want to you know, end up having to, or actually this is not that long because we're dividing by four. But it's, it's a decimal. So we're just going to leave it written like that. So we would divide by 1,500 first. One plus. Fifteen hundred divide or twenty five hundred divided by fifteen hundred. I'm gonna go to an exact answer, which is not a decimal. Five over three. I couldn't write enough sixes there to get it to work. Okay. Now, here's where our solving of exponential equations comes in. How do we get the T out of the exponent? Are the bases the same on these things? How do I how am I allowed to do that? Okay, I gotta change it into a log. What log do I want to use here? No. Absolutely not. No, because that's not a good number. You don't do log base of a big long mess. If the bases aren't the same, what do you use? Natural log. So we're going to do the natural log of 5 over 3. The natural log of 1 plus 0 0.015 over 4. And then we, that allows us to bring the 4t down to the front. Okay. Now, we're trying to get what by itself? T. So what do we divide by to get T by itself? Because this is all multiplied together. 4 times T times the natural log of that. So I'm going to divide by what? Everything except for the T, right? So 4 natural log of that stuff is what I'm dividing by. This side over here, this would be what I would consider a, a uh, an exact answer. Since we're dealing with time and money here, we want to get a decimal approximation for that because we want to know how much of a year or how many years do we need. So we need to get that actual, get that number. So T is equal to the natural log of five thirds divided by four natural log of one plus Zero one five over four. Okay, let's get the that the decimal approximation for that. See how long it's going to take us to get from fifteen hundred bucks to twenty five hundred bucks. So natural log of five divided by three divided by parentheses four times the natural log one plus point zero one five divided by four. Close up all those parentheses. 34.12 years. Takes a while there.
at that interest rate. Now, wonder why people invest in the stock market instead of savings accounts. Your money grows faster, but you could also lose it. That's the, that's the risk. Okay, high risk accounts when you're young, low risk accounts when you get closer to retirement age. That's life lesson for you. Personal finance in an algebra class. So, all right, so compound interest. That formula, important, know it, okay? That's a compound interest formula. It's compounded quarterly, monthly, all that, okay? There's another formula. It's a little easier to remember. It's a continuous interest formula. Continuous interest is this formula, A of T, P, E to the RT. A of T, still the same thing, it's account worth. P, still the principal. R is your rate, interest rate. T is time in years. E is not a variable, it's the number, that E thing. I always remember this as the, the PERT formula. I don't know if y'all ever heard of PERT uh, shampoo or the brand. I don't even really know if they make it anymore, but that used to be a, a brand, PERT. And I just remember that word there. So that's all I, was, I want to remember that. Okay, now continuous interest is what happens, the reason we have this formula is, is if you take compound interest and you just start increasing the number of times the interest is put in every year until it becomes like every second or every half second, every quarter of a second, every tenth of a second, that sort of thing. And the more and more you increase the number of times per year, the closer it gets to this formula. This formula is the, in that calculus you call it the limit uh, of the the other one, the compound interest formula. So, so this is, they're always putting your interest back in continuously. Like when it earns a half a cent, they put it back in. If it earns a quarter of a cent, they put it back in. So it's, it's interest continuously going back into the account. It doesn't wait until the end of the third month, end of the sixth month, end of the ninth month, end of the twelfth month. It does it all the time. Okay. So with it, a lot of the same stuff. Okay. Here's a type of question that we could we could get with this. I don't know what letter wrong. C E. I don't. I why did I go from A to D? What the heck? Nobody. Yeah, we would be on D right now. I, I don't know what I was doing. Quantum leap into a different time period. All right. Well, how long would it take to double the investment? at 5% continuous how long would it take to double our investment at 5% continuously what's the investment doesn't matter as long as it doubles exactly it doesn't matter as long as it doubles what would be the easiest investment to double one dollar absolutely make it easy on yourself exactly so if we're going to double our investment a of t equals p to the ert we're using that formula because it's continuously so that's why we know to use that formula they could give us the same kind of problem and say five percent quarterly and that would tell us to use the other formula okay but the same idea works here that if we're going to double an investment make it the easiest investment possible that it should take the same amount of time to double a dollar as it would to double a thousand dollars or to double a million dollars. That's a better, that's a funner example, right? But it should say, take the same amount of time at the same rate and with the same way of compounding interest. So our rate is 0.05. See? So technically, what do we do first with this problem? 
divide by one. So we get two equals e to the 0.05 t if we divide it by one. It doesn't matter. If they gave you an initial investment of $1,000, you would put 1000 for P and 2000 for the double. And then it actually matters. But now, it's got an E as the base. Well, how can I get the T out of the exponent? Natural log. Makes sense, right? So if I do the natural log of both sides, what happens to the E? It goes away. So we have 0 0.05 T is equal to the natural log of 2, which is just a number. And how do I get T by itself? Divide by the 0 0.05. Pretty simple problem. So natural log of 2. Close the parentheses. Divided by 0 0.05. 13.86 what? Years. Remember, time is always in years. If they said triple an investment, what changes about the way we work that? If, yeah, instead of a two, you put a three. If they said quadruple, you put a four instead of a two. That's it. It is that easy. Okay. If they don't, if they say continuously, the word it's kind of like word problems. They're going to tell you compounded quarterly, compounded monthly. They're going to say compounded continuously in the problem. So that'll tell you which formula to use, right? How, how rare are accounts like this? How, how what? Like, like rare, because like if we put in like five grand in 14 years, we have 10 grand. You know, like, it seems like standard thing. Not really. Yeah. Not really. It, it's, it, the rates are variable. They change uh, according to uh, what is the Federal Reserve sets interest rates. Right now, uh, interest rates are kind of stagnant. They're real low, uh, which is good for if you're borrowing money. Interest rates are still pretty low for that. Uh, but it also means that interest rates that the banks are paying out is also really low because they're not making as much money when they loan you money. They never get, uh, uh, I think, a mortgage rate right now for, for a house. If you're gonna, I don't think any of you are going to buy a house right now in your life. But uh, if you're buying a house right now, the mortgage rate's like four. 4.75, I think, which is a kind of a higher rate. Uh, a few years ago, uh, when the economy was down pretty low, they lowered interest rates to help try to boost it, and they got interest rates down to like three percent, which is really low uh, for a, a home loan. And uh, the smart people don't want to have to rebuy their houses at that. But uh, car loans are around uh, a new car is around four percent, four and a half percent. Uh, sometimes you, if you qualify, you can get zero percent financing, but I don't know anybody that qualifies for those. Uh, I don't, I've never met any of those people. Uh, I'm not one of those people, I'm sure. Uh, I haven't tried for that either. So, uh, but used car loans around five percent, five six percent, something like that. And it all depends on your credit rating and all that. As far as interest goes, you've got to shop around. Like you would, I would call. You know, farmers and merchants see what their interest rate on a savings account was, and then call CBNS up here in town. I would call Regions, just a larger bank. A lot of times, the larger banks can afford to give you more money so that you will invest. Because basically, what they're doing, the reason they can pay you interest, is because they're taking your money while it's in the bank, and they're investing it in other places. They're guaranteeing you a half a percent every three months. But then they're probably making, you know, four or five percent on their investments because they will invest in riskier uh, stocks and make money back out of that. But then they guarantee you some money, even if they lose some on this account, they probably made more on another account that allows them to be able to guarantee you that. Um, like I said, CDs where you you put your money in and it's locked there for a certain amount of time. They're going to give you a higher interest rate because they know your money's not going anywhere and they can use it longer. Uh, so, like, there are some CDs that are six months. There are CDs that are one year. There are three years, five years. Every bank offers different things. Uh, national banks usually give you higher interest rates. So if you're looking to leave some money there, uh, a national bank is sometimes a good thing. The only problem is, is you don't have a brick-and-mortar 
place to go to and talk to somebody. And and that, that probably doesn't bother your generation as much as it does in my parents' generation. Uh, they they like to talk to me. Um, I tend a lot to talk to people too when I'm talking about money. Because <laughs> you know that computer up there doesn't really know how I feel about losing money. So all right, uh, we're actually going. I'm going to just truncate the last section. We're not going to do it. Period. We won't have a quiz over it. We won't have it on the test. So this is what, going to be the last section of chapter six, page four seventy two, seven through sixty seven. Odd, obviously. Uh, work day tomorrow. Quiz Friday. Chapter six test uh, will be Monday. Our final exam will be May the 4th, Friday, uh, Star Wars Day, May the 4th. Yeah, so that's, that's when our final will be. It will be from 8 to 10. And we'll skip, you won't have a skinny block that day. You probably won't have a skinny block any time that week anyway, because that's it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll put it in the